Argument and Dramatis Personae, to the libretto for the opera Don Juan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Argument to the libretto to the opera Don Juan by Lorenzo de Ponte. The translator from the Italian into English is unknown. Argument. The scene of this opera is laid at the village of Castile. Don Juan, a young nobleman of licentious habits, whose castle is situated in the neighborhood, rudely forces his way, during the night, into the sleeping apartment of Donna Anna, who is betrothed to Don Octavio. In the midst of the confusion created by this audacious act, Don Pedro, the father of Donna Anna, enters and, during his struggle with the ravisher, he is mortally wounded, while Don Juan, accompanied by his servant, Leporello, escapes. While Don Juan and Leporello are in consultation about some new amour, Donna Elvira, a lady who had been deserted by the former, enters and taxes him with his cruelty, but he succeeds in escaping from her reproaches and leaves her alone with Leporello, who discloses to the disconsolate lady the extent of his master's perfidy. We are next introduced to the palace of Don Juan, near which a village festival is being celebrated. Zerlina, a peasant girl, being on the eve of marrying Maceto, a young villager. Zerlina is induced to enter the palace with Don Juan, while Maceto, filled with jealousy, is left in charge of Leporello, who has orders to fill the wine cup nimbly for the purpose of intoxicating the distracted lover. But while Don Juan is employing all his arts upon Zerlina, Donna Elvira again enters and undeceives the young girl, notwithstanding the efforts of Don Juan to make her believe Elvira is deranged. Donna Anna and Don Octavio, having no suspicion that Don Juan is the murderer of whom they are in search, claim the libertine's assistance in the task they have undertaken, but they are soon undeceived by Elvira, while Don Juan, after having, with the greatest effrontery, again offered his services to Donna Anna, leaves the apartment. The festival continues, and Maceto's jealousy is half quieted when Donna Anna, Donna Elvira, and Don Octavio enter, masked, and are welcomed by the libertine. The dance then proceeds, and Don Juan forces Zerlina into a closet. Her cries for help are answered by the newcomers, and Don Juan, called on to defend himself, draws his sword while the thunder of heaven is heard to roll. Don Juan, for the purposes of seducing Elvira's attendant, changes dresses with his servant. In the meantime, Elvira appears at the casement of a house and is induced, by the pretended repentance of her seducer, to descend into the street. When he slips off and leaves her with Leporello, who, according to the orders he has received, leads her away, and, at the same instant, Maceto enters in search of Don Juan, whom he mistakes for Leporello, threatening the former with death if he should overtake him, and in return he is soundly beaten. Don Juan, to escape from pursuit, enters, along with Leporello, the cemetery in which Don Pedro is buried. There, while engaged in light discourse, the statue of Don Pedro utters a warning to the libertine, who, treating the matter lightly, jeeringly asks the marble effigy to supper. A splendid repast is spread, and in the midst of this merriment the statue enters, and invites him to be his guest. Don Juan accepts the offer, and is carried off to the infernal regions in the midst of flames, thunder, and lightning. Dramatis Personae Don Juan, a young nobleman of licentious habits, read by Beth Thomas. Donna Anna, betrothed to Don Octavio, read by Avaí. Don Octavio, her lover, read by Todd. Don Pedro, commander of the order of Knights of Malta, father of Donna Anna, read by Alan Mapstone. Donna Elvira, a lady of Burgo, deserted by Don Juan, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Leporello, Don Juan's servant, read by Larry Wilson. Serlina, a country girl, read by Christine G. Masetto, her lover, read by John Burlinson. 
male and female peasants, musicians and servants. Read by K. Hand. And read by Rodgord. And the stage directions. Read by Marianne Spiegel. Scene, a village of Castile. End of Argument and Dramatis Personae. Act One of the Libretto to the Opera Don Juan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Libretto to the Opera Don Juan by Lorenzo de Ponte. Act One. Scene One. A square. On one side, Don Pedro's palace. On the other, a hotel. The day is about to dawn. Enter Leporello. To be harassed night and day, and to get no thanks for it. Uh, to be exposed to the wind and rain, fair but badly. Robbed of sleep, it is too much. I am resolved to turn gentleman myself and be a slave no longer. What a precious master is this of mine. He amuses himself by playing the lover within, and stations me here to play the sentinel without. Ah, but soft! Footsteps approach this way, and I must not be discovered. Enter Don Juan and Donna Anna. Hope not unless thou killest me that I'll allow thee to escape. Your cries, foolish woman, are in vain. You shall never know who I am. Aside. <laughs> oh, mercy on us! What a noise! What a tumult! My master is now in a new scrape. Be silent, or tremble at my fury. Help! Help! Traitor! With desperate fury still will I pursue thee. This desperate fury will draw down vengeance upon me. Aside. A desperate act! Oh, Lord, I shall have my share of it. Exit Donna Anna. Enter Don Pedro. Quit your hold, villain, and defend yourself. Away, I will not deign to fight with thee. Do you hope to escape me thus? Aside. I wish at least that I could escape. If you will, perish, dotard. Take your destiny. They fight. Don Pedro is wounded. Ah, uh, help! I am lost. I die by the assassin's hand. I feel my soul take flight from my heaving breast. Ah, uh, how soon the unhappy wretch has fallen. Already from his palpitating breast I see the life depart. Aside. What a deed is this! What atrocity! I feel my heart beating within me from fear, and know not what to say or do. Softly. Leporello, where are you? Here, master, sinner that I am. And where are you? I am here. Who is killed, pray? You or the old man? What a question, dolt! The old man, to be sure. Oh, rare! Two fine exploits to break into the apartment of the daughter, and then kill the father. He was bent on his ruin. And was Dona Anna bent on hers? Peace, knave. Do not annoy me, and come with me, unless you wish to be served in the same way. By no means, master. I am mute. Excellent. Enter Dona Anna, Don Octavio, servants with torches. Ah, my father is in danger. Let us fly to his succor. You may command me to the last drop of my blood. But where is the villain? Here I left him, but just heaven. What sight of horror now presents itself? My father, my dear father. My lord. Ah, the assassin has killed him. Bloody, wounded, his face covered with the pale hue of death. He breathes no longer. He is cold. My father, my dear, my beloved father. I faint. I die. 
hasten my friends to assist my love fetch water sense try all means to restore her hasten i entreat you donna anna my bride my friend this extreme grief will kill the unhappy girl ah me she revives redouble your efforts oh my father conceal remove from her this dreadful spectacle my love cheer up be comforted duet fly cruel one oh fly oh heaven let me die also since he is dead who gave me life hear me oh hear me my heart's best treasure look for a moment on me your faithful lover speaks who lives for you alone ah pardon me you are indeed my love but my grief this sorrow ah where is my dear father your father ah dearest recall not the bitter remembrance behold in me a father and a husband oh swear that you will revenge his blood so untimely spilt i swear by those bright eyes i swear by our mutual love just, just heavens, heavens what a moment is this which calls for such an oath my, my heart, heart is, is agitated, agitated by, by a thousand, thousand conflicting, conflicting emotions. Exuant. Scene two. A street. Enter Don Juan and the Barello. Come then, out with this mystery. What is it? The affair I am about to speak of is of consequence. No doubt. Of great consequence. Better and better. To the point, then. Swear then not to be in a passion. I swear it on my honour, provided it does not relate to Don Pedro. We are alone. I see we are. No one hears us. Go on. Well, since you give me leave, dear master, I say the life you lead is that of a sad rascal. Audacious fellow, do you dare to talk to me thus? Nay, but your oath. No more, knave. Oath or no oath. Be silent or... Threatening him. I am dumb. I will not even breathe, dear master. It is the way to keep us friends. Now, hark ye, Leporello, do you know what brings me here? I know nothing. But as it is now full daylight, is it not some new conquest? You will give me the lady's name, that I may put it on my list. Spoken like a clever fellow. Know, then, that I am enamoured of a most beautiful woman, and I am sure she also returns my love. I have seen her and conversed with her, and to-night she will accompany me to my country house. Hush! I think that I perceive the perfume of a woman. Zooks! What an exquisite nose he has! At first glance I see she is handsome. And what an eyesight! Let us retire a little and reconnoitre. Aside. He is on fire already. Excellent. Enter Donna Elvira, Don Juan, and Leporello, concealed. Air. Ah, who can tell me where to find this barbarous man? Though he has violated his faith, I still, to my reproach, love him. If I succeed in discovering him, and he still refuses to acknowledge me, I will return the torments he has caused me. I will tear out his heart. To Leporello. Do you hear? Some fair one is complaining of some faithless lover. Poor girl, poor girl. Let us endeavour to console her. Aside. He has consoled in this manner one thousand and eight hundred only. A madam, madam. Who is there? Heaven, what do I see? Aside. Oh, rare, it is Dona Elvira. Is it you, Don Juan? Monster, robber, mountain of deceit. Aside. Ah, uh, what endearing titles. It is no harm that she knows him so well. Be a little more rational, dear Donna Elvira, I entreat you. Aside. This woman embarrasses me. Aloud. 
If you will not believe me, you will believe this gentleman. That's me, exactly. Say something to her. Aside to him. And what can I say to her? Aloud. Yes, yes, you will explain it all. Steals off. Well, make haste, then. Um, madam, assuredly in this strange world we live in, it may perhaps uh, be safely asserted uh, that a square is not a circle, and therefore... Abominable villain! Is my grief a fit subject for mockery? Turns toward Don Juan, who is gone. And you, heaven, the reprobate has flown. Unhappy me, what shall I do? Which way did he go? Ah, uh, let him go. He does not deserve that you should bestow a thought upon him. The villain deceived, betrayed me. Oh, take comfort. You are not the first lady he has deserted, neither will you be the last. Look at this by no means small book. It is filled entirely with the names of his mistresses. Every country, every city, nay, every village has witnessed his exploits in gallantry. Air. Fair lady, this is a catalogue of the beauties my master has loved. It is a catalogue which I have made. Look over it and read it with me. In Italy, six hundred and forty. In Germany, two hundred and thirty-one. In Spain, already one thousand and three. Among these are peasant girls, chambermaids, citizens, wives, baronesses, countesses, marchionesses, and princesses, women of every rank and of all ages, shapes, and complexions. His modes of courtship are various. The fair woman he praises for her gentleness, the brunette for her great constancy, the pale languishing maiden for her tenderness. In winter, a little plumpness is not disagreeable. In summer, he prefers the slender, the tall, the stately. But a little woman is, in every season, alluring. He makes a conquest of the dame mature in age, for the pleasure of inscribing her upon his list. Though certainly his ruling passion has a strong bias in favor of youth. He cares not whether she be rich or poor, ugly or handsome, provided she wears a petticoat. Uh, you know the rest. Exit. And thus the villain has betrayed me? And is this the return for all my affection? But my wrongs shall not go unrevenged. Before he escapes me, let the arm of justice. Love sleeps in my breast, and nothing wakes but rage, hatred, and contempt. Exit. Scene three. A view of Don Juan's palace. Enter Zerlina, Masetto, male and female peasants. Duet and chorus. Maidens, who are formed for love, let not a season pass away. If your hearts beat with emotion, behold the remedy. Oh, what pleasure is mine! What, what pleasure, pleasure is mine! Tralara, tralara. Yous who are wild and inconstant by nature, do not go roving about. Short follies are best. What pleasure is mine? What, what pleasure, pleasure is, is mine? mine? Tra -la -la, tra -la -la. Come, my beloved, let us be merry. Let us dance, sing, and play. What pleasure is mine? What, what pleasure, pleasure is, is mine? mine? Tra -la -la, tra -la -la, tra -la -la. Enter Don Juan and Leporello. Heaven be praised she is gone, but look, look, what a lively group, what pretty girls. Aside. Zooks, among so many, one or two may fall to my share. Dear friends, good day. Pray go on with your sports. Nay, I entreat you, good friends. Is this a wedding? Yes, my lord, and I am the bride. I give you joy. Where's the bridegroom? Here, my lord, at your service. Very well, at my service. Spoken like a youth of spirit. He deserves to be a husband. My dear Masetto has an excellent heart. And so have I, be assured. We should therefore be friends. Your name? Selina. 
and yours? Masetto. Ah, oh, my dear Zelina, my dear Mazzetto, I make you an offer of my protection. Leporello, what are you doing there, you scoundrel? I too am making an offer of my protection. Conduct these happy people into my palace. Give orders to supply them with coffee, chocolate, wine. Do your best to entertain them all. Show them the garden, the gallery, the rooms. And above all, pay attention to my dear Mazzetto. Do you understand? I understand. Come, friends, let us go. My lord. What say you? My Zerlina cannot stay here without me. His lordship will supply your place. He will play your part to perfection. Be content. Zelina is in the hands of a cavalier. Go then. She shall soon follow with me. Go, fair not. I am in the care of a cavalier. And for that reason... Of course you have nothing to fear. Ay, but by our lady... No more of this. Take care, Mazzetto. If you do not immediately depart, you shall repent it. Excellent Leporello, Mazzetto, and peasants. My sweet Zelina... At last we are rid of this stupid fellow. Do I not contrive well? My lord, he is my husband. What? He? Do you think that a man of rank as I am can suffer such beauty, such a sweet face as yours, to be profaned by a base clown like that? But, my lord, I have promised to marry him. Such a promise is not worth a rush. You were not born to be the wife of a country booby. Those roguish eyes, those pouting lips, those pretty fingers so white and tapering ensure a better fortune. Ah, uh, no, I should not. Should not what, my Zelina? I should not like to be on post on. I know that noblemen are seldom frank and sincere with women. It is the calumny of the vulgar. Nobility and honour go together. Let us not lose time. This moment I will marry you. You, my lord? Certainly. That house you see is mine. There we shall be alone, and there, my angel, we will be married. Duet. There we will plight our faith. There you will whisper yes. See, it is not far. Then let us hasten thither. I would, and yet I would not. My heart doth strangely flutter. I know I should be happy, but still he may deceive me. Come then, my heart's delight. I pity poor Massetto. Thy fate I will soon change. Haste then, I can resist no longer. Let us go, let us go, my beloved, to enjoy the pleasures of innocent love. Enter Donna Elvira. Stay, vile man. Heaven has permitted me to overhear your perfidious design. And I may yet be in time to save this poor, artless girl from your relentless grasp. Ah, me! What is this I hear? Cupid, befriend me. My angel, I am merely amusing myself with the girl's simplicity. Amusing yourself? Yes, I know too well how you amuse yourself. My lord, is this true that the lady says? To Zerlina. My charmer, this is a poor, forlorn damsel who adores me, and from sheer pity I feign to love her. Unfortunately for me, my heart is but too tender. Exit Don Juan. Air. This ungrateful man has deserted me and ruined my peace. Wretched and abandoned as I am, I cannot subdue a tender feeling for him. When I think of my wrongs, I breathe vengeance. When I behold the perils that surround him, my heart beats to save him. Excellent. Enter Don Juan. Afterwards, Don Octavio and Donna Anna. My evil genius seems to take pleasure today in crossing all my schemes. All goes wrong. To Donna Anna. Cease those unavailing tears. Let us think only of vengeance. Ah, Don Juan. Aside. There wanted but this encounter. Friend, this meeting is fortunate. Have you a heart? Have you a generous soul? Aside. The devil surely has whispered something to her. Aloud. Wherefore do you ask such a question? We need your friendship. Aside. I breathe again. Aloud. 
Pray command me, command my relations, my friends. This arm, this sword, my life shall be devoted to your service. But fairest Donna Anna, why those tears? Enter Donna Elvira. Ha! Do I find you again, monster of perfidy? Cortetto. To Donna Anna. Do not listen to this treacherous man. He has betrayed me, and will betray you. What a noble aspect! What soft majesty! Her grief, her tears, fill me with compassion. This lady, my friend, is deranged. Leave her with me. Perhaps I may restore her to reason. Do not believe his perfidy. She is deranged. Heed her not. Remain. O oh, heavens, remain! Whom shall we believe? My soul is moved by an uneasy feeling which impels me to pity this unhappy woman, though its nature I cannot explain. Disdain, rage, contempt, and terror warn me against this traitor, although the motive I cannot explain. I will not quit this place till I see the result of this. Her deportment, her expressions betray no symptom of madness. Aside. I must remain, or their suspicion may be excited. Malignity appears in his countenance. To Don Juan. Therefore, this lady. Is deranged, I tell you. To Elvira. And this gentleman. Is a vile betrayer. Unhappy woman. Base deceiver. I, I begin, begin to, to doubt. doubt. Aside to Elvira. Silence. People are gathering round us. Be prudent, or you will expose yourself to observation. Do not hope it. I will not remain silent. I have lost all prudence. My wrongs shall be exposed to the world. Those smothered, Those smothered accents, accents, that change, change of colour, are indications, indications but too certain. certain. They, they determine, determine my, my opinion. opinion. Exit Donna Elvira. Poor unhappy lady, I must follow her to prevent her committing some rash act. Excuse me, Donna Anna. If I can serve you, you will find me at my house. Farewell, friend. Exit. Don Octavio, I am confounded. What has happened? For pity's sake, lend me your aid. Be tranquil, dearest love. Oh, heaven, he is my father's murderer. What sayest thou? There can no longer be a doubt of it. The tone in which he uttered the last words brought to my recollection the voice of the villain who entered my apartment. Oh, heavens! Is it possible that under the sacred guise of friendship? Relate to me this mysterious event. The night was already far advanced when, sitting in my chamber, unfortunately alone, I saw a man enter, muffled in a cloak. At first I thought it had been yourself, but soon perceived my error. Gracious heaven! Proceed! He approached me without saying a word and seized me in his arms. I endeavoured to release myself, but he pressed me still closer. I shrieked aloud, but no one answered. He endeavoured to stifle my cries. I gave myself up for lost. Villain! But go on! At length the horror inspired by this atrocious attempt gave me new strength, and by dint of struggling and the vigorous efforts that I made, I escaped from him. I breathe again. I then renewed my cries and called for help. The villain fled. I boldly followed him into the street to prevent his escape and became the assailant. My father ran to my assistance to ascertain who he was, but the perfidious man whose strength was greater than that of my parent completed his infamy by assassination. Heir, thou knowest now who t'was assailed my honour, the hand which has deprived me of a father, I ask for that vengeance to which your own heart itself would prompt you. Should your zeal relax, recall to mind the wound on his aged breast, the earth bathed with his blood. Excellent. Enter Leporello, and then Don Juan. Whatever comes of it, I must leave this precious master of mine. Yonder he comes. How perfectly indifferent he seems. Well, my little Leporello, does all go well? No little, Don Juan. All goes ill. How? All goes ill? 
I conducted those people to your palace as you desired me. Bravo! I spared neither flattery nor lying to amuse them, in which your service has made me so proficient. Bravo! I said a thousand things to Masetto to pacify him and remove all jealousy from his mind. Excellent, by my faith! I set both men and women drinking. They were already half seas over. Some were singing, others drinking. When, who do you think arrived? Zerlina. Bravo! And who with her? Elvira. Bravo! And she said of you... All the ill she could lay her tongue to. Excellent, by my faith. But what were you doing all this time? I was mute. And Elvira? Kept on shrieking against you. And you? When I found she had nearly exhausted herself, I drew her gently out of the orchard and carefully locked the door. I then stole away and left her in the street. Excellent, most excellent. The affair cannot be better. It remains for me to finish what you have so well begun. I will go and amuse these country girls till night. Air. Since their heads are warmed with wine, prepare a grand fate to entertain them. If you can find any other pretty girls, try to bring them also. Let some dance minuets, others the fandango. I, for my part, will go roving about making love to one or the other. Ah, by tomorrow morning you will have to add at least half a score to my list. Excellent. Scene 4. A rural prospect. On one side the palace of Don Juan, on the other a pavilion. Enter Zerlino and Masetto. Masetto! Masetto, I say! Do you hear me? Touch me not. But why? Perfidious girl! Do you think that I will suffer the touch of an unfaithful hand? Ah, oh, no! The cruel one! From thee I have not deserved this treatment. How? Have you the impudence to make excuses, to remain alone with a man, abandon me on my wedding day, brand with infamy the forehead of an honorable peasant? Ah, if it were not for the scandal it would cause. But if I am innocent, if he attempted to deceive me, and what is it you fear? Tranquilize yourself, my life. He did not touch even the tip of my finger. Ungrateful man, do you not believe me? Come here, expend your rage on me, kill me, do everything you please. But then, Masetto, let us be friends again. Air. Beat me, Masetto. Your Zelina will stand here patient as a lamb to receive your blows. Though you tear my hair, put out my eyes, I will joyfully kiss your dear sweet hands. You have not the heart to do it. Forgive me, then, dearest Masetto. Our future days shall pass in happiness and joy. How this little siren contrives to bewitch me. We men have marvellous weak minds. Without. Let all be prepared for a grand festival. Masetto, do you hear his lordship's voice? Well, what then? He is coming. Let him come. Ah! I wish I could get out of his way. What do you fear? Why do you turn pale? Oh, I understand, false girl. You fear lest I should discover what has passed between you. Quick, let me hide myself before he comes. Here is a niche where I may stand concealed. Hides himself. Stay, stay. Where are you going? Do not hide yourself, Masetta. If he finds you, my poor fellow, you know not what he will do to you. Let him do his worst. Aside. It is in vain to talk to him. Speak loud, and remain here. What freak has he in his head now? Aside. I shall find out whether she has been faithful to me, and what has passed between them. This ungrateful, cruel man is resolved today to cause some fatal, terrible event. Enter Don Juan with the peasants. 
Come, rouse yourselves like gallant fellows. Come, take courage, my good friends. We will be joyous, we will laugh and play. To the dancing room conduct them, give them refreshments, spare for nothing. Excellent peasants. Concealed beneath these trees, perhaps you will not discover me. My graceful Zelina, I have seen you, you cannot escape. Oh, I entreat you, let me go. No, no, my angel, remain here. If you have the least spark of pity. Yes, divine creature, I am all love for you. Come this way, I will make you happy. Aside. Oh, should he see my husband, I know well what he would do. Mazzetto? Yes, Mazzetto. But why concealed? Here is your Zerlina, who, poor girl, cannot be happy without you. Yes, my lord, I understand. But come, be merry. Do you not hear the musicians? Let us go in together. Yes, yes, let us be merry. Yes, yes, let us be merry, and all three go and dance with the others. Yes, and all three go and dance with the others. Excellent. Enter Donna Anna, Donna Elvira, and Don Octavio, masked. Take courage, my dear friends, and his misdeeds we shall discover. Therefore take courage. Our friend counsels us well. Then, dearest Donna Anna, dismiss this grief, this fear. The step is dangerous. Some calamity may happen. I tremble for my beloved, and for us also. Enter Don Juan and Leporello from the window. Master, master, look here. See what gay masks are coming. Invite them in. Say they do me much honor. That, by, by the, the voice, voice and figure, figure must be the, the treacherous, treacherous man. man. Hist, hist, masks, masks. To Octavio. Answer, Answer quickly. quickly. To Leporello. What would you? My lord invites you to the ball. We thank him for the honor. Come then, fair companions. Even to these, my friend, we'll also give proofs of love. May, May just, just heaven, heaven revenge, revenge the wishes, wishes of, my of my heart. May, May just heaven further my alighted love. love. Excellent. Scene 5. A Grand Ballroom in Don Juan's Palace. Enter Zerlina, Don Juan, Leporello, Massetto, male and female peasants, servants and musicians. My lovely girls, repose a while. Pray, gentlemen, take some refreshment. You shall soon return to your sports and your dancing. Bring coffee here. Chocolate. Ah, Serlina, take care. Ices. Sweetmeats. The scene begins too sweetly. It bitterly may end. Lovely Zelina, you are most captivating. Your lordship is too good. How delighted is the artful jade. My sweet pretty creatures, how I dote on you. Touch her, do, your head shall pay for it. Noticing Masetto. Masetto's eyes roll fearfully. This will end badly. Masetto's eyes roll fearfully. We must be cautious. Aside. This thoughtless girl will drive me mad. Enter Donna Anna, Donna Elvira, Don Octavio. Introducing them. Pray walk in, most amiable masks. Today we keep open house, liberty forever. We, we feel, feel grateful, grateful for, for so, so many signs, signs of generosity. generosity. Strike up, musicians. You, Leporello, provide the ladies with partners. Zerlina, you must dance with me. Now gaily dance away. That is the country girl. I tremble. Conceal your alarm. Everything goes on well. To Leporello. Keep your eye on Mazzetto. To Don Juan. The poor fellow does not dance. To Zerlina. I am your partner, Zerlina. Come this way. Come, dear Mazzetto. Let us put it with the rest. I tell you, I will not dance. Yes, pray dance, dear friend. I tell you, no. You must, dear Massetto. Dance? No, I will not. My dear Massetto, let us do as the others do. 
I can restrain myself no longer. For, For pity's, pity's sake, sake dissemble. To Zerlina. Come with me, my angel. To the Barello. Let me alone, I say. Ah, Zerlina, Zerlina. Come, come with me. The dance bringing Don Juan and Zerlina to the door of a side room. He forces her into it. Help! Help! I am betrayed! I see a storm coming. Hides himself. The, the traitor, traitor has, has fallen, fallen into, into the, the net. net. From within. Help! Friends! Help! Help! Let, Let us save, save the, the innocent, innocent girl. girl. Ah! Zerlina! Villain! Hear her shrieking from that side. Let us burst in the door. Returning. Oh, help me! I am dying! We, we are, are here, here to, to defend, defend you. you. Re-entering with a sword drawn and turning to Leporello. Here is the wretch who has insulted thee. Seizing him. Die, wretched villain. Ah, what are you doing? You shall die as you deserve. Do not hope thus to deceive us. The impious wretch by this pretext thinks to conceal his vile attempt. They unmask. Elvira here? Yes, monster. And Don Otavio? Himself, sir. Ah, believe me. Vile, vile betrayer. betrayer. All, All is now known. known. Tremble, Tremble villain. villain. Thy, Thy savage, savage cruelty is dark and terrible. terrible. To Leporello. My brain is confused. I know not what I am doing. A dreadful tempest is now threatening me. Thunder is heard. Listen to the avenging thunder. Listen, Listen to, to the, the avenging, avenging thunder, thunder, which around thee now resounds. Within this day its bolt shall fall on thy condemned devoted head. But my courage does not fail me. I do not quail, nor am confounded. Even were the world to fall, nothing can my soul appall. But his courage does not fail him. He does not quail, nor is confounded. Even were the world to fall, nothing could his soul appall. End of the first act. Act Two of the Libretto to the Opera Don Juan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Libretto to the Opera Don Juan by Lorenzo de Ponte. Act Two. Scene One. A square as in the first act. Enter Don Juan and Leporello. Duet. Away, fool, and do not trouble me. No, master, no. I will stay no longer. Hark ye, friend. I will go, I say. What have I done to you that you wish to leave me? Oh, nothing assuredly. Only have killed me. I am in earnest and will go. You are a simpleton. I will stay no longer. Leporello. Well, master. Let us be friends again. Here, take this. What is it? Four pistolas. Ay, but observe now. For this once I submit. But you are not to suppose that a man of my stamp can be seduced like the weaker sex by money. We'll speak no more of that. Have you courage to do what I propose? I will, if you give up women. Give up women, madmen? Give up women? Know that they are as essential to me as the bread I eat and the air I breathe. And have you the heart to deceive them all? It is nothing but love. He who is faithful to one woman is cruel to another. Now my ruling principle is so extensive that I love them all. But women who never reason call this benevolence of mine deceit and treachery. I never saw in all my life a man of such vast benignant nature. Well, but what have you promised? Listen, 
You have seen the girl who attends on Elvira? Not I. Since the hour you were born, Leporello, you never beheld so sweet a creature. I am resolved to try my fortune with her. And in order to stimulate her so much the more, I have determined to present myself to her in your clothes. And why not in your own? The dress of a gentleman obtains but little credit with women of her class. Make haste. Nay, master, for several reasons. Be quick, I will not be opposed. They exchange cloaks and hats. Elvira at the window. Trio. At the window. Peace, rebellious heart. Beat not thus. Why excite my compassion for this perjured man? To Don Juan. Hush. I think I hear the voice of Dona Elvira. Stay there a while, and let me profit by the opportunity. Elvira, my soul's idol. Is not this the base ingrate? Yes, my sweet life, tis I, I sue for pardon. Heavens, what a sudden tumult agitates my breast. Aside. The foolish woman will again believe him. Descend then, fairest jewel, and thou shalt find that tis thou alone my soul adores, and that I am penitent. No, deceiver, I cannot trust you. Believe me, or I'll kill myself. Aside. If he goes on, I shall laugh out. My dearest love, come down. Heaven, what a trial is this! I know not whether to go or remain here. Oh, protect my weak credulity. I trust she soon will yield. What a masterpiece is this! Such a fertile talent no man ever yet possessed. Aside. His lying lips have wheedled her again. Have pity, heaven, on her credulity. Well, friend, what think you of this? I think you have a heart of adamant. Sure, you are a mere lout. Now, observe what I say. When she comes out, run and embrace her. Take care, feign my voice. Then as gently as you can, lead her away from this. But, sir... No reply. If she should know me? She will not, if you do not wish it. Hush, the door opens. Now, be prudent. Enter Donna Elvira. Behold me here, then. Aside. Let us see how he will play his part. Aside. A pretty situation, truly. Could I ever have believed that my sorrow would have melted that obdurate heart? Does then the beloved Don Juan repent, and to his duty and my love return? Yes, my dearest. Cruel man! Could you but know what tears, what sighs you have caused me? Who, I, my love? Yes, you. Alas, how grieved I am. But you will not leave me again. No, pretty one. Will you be forever mine? Forever and ever. Embracing him. My dearest. My sweetest. Aside. The joke is not unpleasant. My heart's treasure. My Venus. The soft flame consumes me. I am reduced to ashes. Aside. The knave is getting warm. And will you not deceive me again? Never, most positively. Swear to me, then. I swear by the kiss which I imprint on this fair hand, and by those bright eyes. Aloud. Ha-ha! There, villain! You die! Oh, heaven! Elvira and the Borello run off, calling after them. Ah, ha, ha, ho! Fate seems to second my designs, but let us see. This is the window. Now for my serenade. Canzonette. Come to the window, my heart's own treasure. 
come and console my anguished heart. If you refuse to alleviate my woe, before your eyes I will expire. You whose lips are sweeter than the honey, you whose heart is steeped in gentleness. Be not, then, O my soul's joy, cruel to me. Let me for a moment see my own fair love. Enter Maseto and Peasants, armed. Keep up your courage, friends. We shall soon find him. Aside. Someone speaks. Stop. I think I hear a footstep. If I mistake not, tis Mazzetto. Who goes there? No answer. Courage? Shoulder arms? Who goes there? Aside. He is not alone. This requires caution. I must not be known. Aloud. A friend. Is that you, Mazzetto? You have guessed it. And who are you? Do you not know me? I am servant to Don Juan. What? Leporello? Servant to that villain? It is too true of that sad rascal. Of that man who is devoid of honor? But stay, tell me now, where can I find him? I and my friends here are seeking him to shoot him. Aside. A pleasant matter, truly. Aloud. Excellent. Well, Mazzetto, I will join you in anything against that villainous master of mine. But hearken to what I have to propose. Let us divide. Half go one way, half the other. By this means he cannot escape. If you should hear anyone making love under a balcony, or should you see any young gentleman walking with a pretty girl across the square, set on him at once, for that is surely he. Lose no time, but off with you at once. You alone remain with me, and you shall soon know why. Excellent peasants. Hush, let me listen. They're off. To Masetto. So, you think we ought to kill him? Assuredly. Would it not be sufficient to break a few bones? No, I will kill him. I will tear him into a hundred pieces. Are you well armed? Showing his gun. Yes. Seizing the gun. Oh, quite enough. Beats him. Oh! Oh, my head! Silence, or I will kill you. Take that for your killing, that for your tearing. Rascal, slave, cur. Exit. Crying loudly. Oh, my head! My bags! Enter Zerlina. Surely I heard Masetta's voice. Help! Help! My dear Zerlina! Oh, God! Help! Help! What has happened? That villain has broken all my bones. Cruel villain! Where is your pain? Here. Well? And here. And here. Come, not so bad, if all the rest be sound. Go home with me, and if you will promise to be less jealous, I... I will cure you, my dear husband. Air. You shall see, dearest, if you'll be kind, what a sweet remedy I have for you. It is quite simple, and no way nauseous. Not even the chemist can it prepare. Tis a sweet balsam, which I bear with me, and I can give it you, if you will try it. And would you know where it is? Feel how it beats. Put your hand here. Placing his hand on her heart. Excellent. Scene 2 an inner court. Enter Leporello and Donna Elvira. I see the light of many torches. Let us remain here till they are gone by. What do you fear, beloved husband? Oh, nothing. Merely to escape observation. Only I wish to see if that light is distant. Ah, how shall I rid myself of her? Stay here a moment, my beloved. Oh, do not leave me says Tet. Alone, and in this gloomy place, my heart begins to beat, and so strong a fear assails me that I feel ready to expire. Aside. The more I search for this accursed door, the less I can find it. Ah, but here it is. Now is the time to fly. Conceals himself. Enter Donna Anna and Donna Octavio. 
Dry these tears, and calm your sorrow. Even the spirit of your father would blame this excessive anguish. Alas, my friend, allow my sorrow to have full vent. Death alone can terminate my woe. Oh, where are you, dearest husband? Aside. If she finds me, I am undone. Yonder I see a door, and quietly I will steal off. Enter Zerlina and Masetto. Stop, Stop, villain! villain. Where, Where are, are you going? going? It, it is, is the, the traitor. traitor. How, How came he, he here? here? He has betrayed us all. Let us put him to death. He is my husband. Mercy, mercy! It is Donna Elvira whom I see. I can scarce believe it. No, he must die. Your pardon, gentlemen and ladies. She is mistaken. For mercy's sake, let me still live. Tis Leporello! What new deceit is this? I am astounded. What can this mean? A thousand gloomy thoughts bewilder my poor brain. If I escape from such a storm, twill be a, a miracle indeed. A thousand gloomy thoughts are whirling through my brain. What a day is this, ye stars! What an unlooked-for event! Exit Donna Anna. Leporello runs off. Stay, perfidious man! Oh, stay! The rascal has wings to his feet. After the enormous crimes we have witnessed, friends, we can no longer doubt that Don Juan is the impious murderer of Donna Anna's father. Air. Go to my afflicted mistress and console her. Dry up the tears which flow from her sweet eyes. Tell her I go to avenge her wrongs, and will return but to announce his death. Excellent. Scene 3 a walled cemetery in which is seen the statue of the commander. Enter Don Juan, and afterwards Leporello. Ha, ha, ha! This is excellent. Now let her seek for me. What a lovely night. It is lighter than the day. It seems formed expressly for hunting after pretty girls. Let me see if it is late. Oh, no, not two hours after sunset. I should like to know how the affair ended between Leporello and Elvira, if he behaved judiciously. He will in the end be the death of me. Do you not know your master? Would I had never known him. How, rascal? I have just now been half murdered on your account. And was that not an honour? Sir, I freely cede it to you. Come, I have some rare adventures to relate to you. But what are you doing here? Come here, and you shall know. There are several incidents which have happened since you left me, which I will relate to you another time, but I will now tell you only the most amusing one of all. Then there must be a woman in the case. Can you doubt that? I just now encountered a lovely young charmer in the street. I went briskly up to her and took her by the hand. She attempted to fly from me, but I whispered a soft speech or two. When she took me, guess for whom? I do not know. For Leporello. For me? She then in turn took me by the hand. Better and better. She caressed me, she embraced me. I then thought she must be some belle of yours. Aside. Ah, pestilence on him. I took advantage of her mistake, but she recognized me, I know not how, and called aloud for help. Hearing footsteps, I jumped over the wall into this place. And you tell me all this with so much indifference? Why not? But suppose it had been my wife. Laughing violently. <laughs> Better still. Before tomorrow's dawn, thou cease to laugh. Who speaks? It is some spirit from the other world. Who knows you thoroughly? Peace, fool. Who goes there? Audacious ribald. Leave the dead in peace. I told you so. With indifference and contempt. It is someone without who is amusing himself at our expense. But stay, is not that the statue of the commander? Read the inscription. Excuse me, I never learned to read by moonlight. Read, I say. Reads. I wait here for vengeance on the impious man who deprived me of life. Do you hear? 
I tremble. The old buffoon. Tell him that I expect him to sup with me this evening. What madness! Can you think of it? Look, look, what terrible glances he casts towards us. He seems alive, he seems to feel, and is about to speak. Obey me instantly, or I'll kill you on the spot and then bury you. Gently, gently, senor. I am going to obey you. Duet. Oh, most respected statue of the most great commander. Oh, master, my heart fails me. I can say nothing more. Proceed, or I plunge this sword into your breast. Aside. How I enjoy his terror. To the statue. Oh, most respected statue, although you are of marble. Oh, my dear master, look, he turns his eyes upon us. Die, rascal. To the statue. Signor, my master here, take care. I do not mean myself. Uh, what a scene is this? Oh, heaven, he nods his head. Away, fool that you are. But look then, master. And what am I to look at? With his cold marble head, he does just so. Nods. To the statue. Speak thou, if thou canst. Wilt thou come to the supper? Yes. I can, can scarce move a limb. My breath is leaving me. For pity's sake, let us go. Let us leave this horrid place. Musing. In truth, the scene is strange. The good old man come to supper. Well, we'll prepare to receive him. And so, let us go. Excellent. Scene 4. A chamber. Enter Donna Anna and Don Octavio. Be comforted, my soul's idol. Soon will the crimes of this abandoned man meet their reward, and we shall be avenged. But alas, my father. It is our duty to bow to the will of heaven. Tomorrow will present you with the only consolation I can offer for your cruel loss. This heart, this hand, with my most tender affection. What say you, and? Oh, heaven, in so sad a moment. Would you then augment my sufferings by new delays? Cruel Anna! Cruel? Ah, no, my love. It is too displeasing to me to defer a happiness we have so long languished for. But the world? Seduce not the constancy of my feeling heart. Love speaks but too loudly for thee. Air. Say not, my own, my dearest love, that I am cruel unto thee. Thou knowest how much I love thee, thou knowest my truth, my faith. Calm then those sad complainings, if thou wouldst not see me with grief expire. Perhaps a day is yet in store, when heaven its mercy toward me will show. Alas! Nothing is left for me but to attempt, by sharing her sorrows, to alleviate them. Exit. Scene 5. A saloon illuminated, with a table spread. Enter Don Juan and Leporello. Finale. The table is already prepared. You, my dear friends, play on, I pray. As my money I am spending, life I am determined to enjoy. Leporello, quick, the supper. Here, master. Quickly I obey. Eating. Ah, what a delicious dish this is. What a furious appetite! What giant mouthfuls does he swallow? I know his mouth waters to see me. Another plate. Uh, ready, sir. Ah, uh, I know that tune well. Alluding to the air played by the band. Pour out some wine. Drinking. <sighs> Excellent, Malmsey. Aside. This bit of pheasant I'll make free to swallow. The rascal is taking something slyly. I will pretend not to see him. Leporello? Yes, master. While I am eating, you must whistle. I do not know how. What say you? Pardon, your cook is so excellent that I could not help tasting too. My cook is so excellent that he could not help tasting too. Enter Elvira. To Don Juan. I am come to give you the last proof of my love. 
she kneels. Your treachery no longer holds a place in my thoughts. I am now moved by pity. I wonder much. What then do you ask? Madame, rise, or I cannot but follow your example. Ah, do not deride my miseries. Deride you? Heaven, and wherefore? Change, then, this dissolute life. Allow me to eat, and if you will, eat with me. Remain, then, still in this impure gulf, a horrible example of iniquity. Here's to sweet women, here's to good wine, the support and glory of human life. Ah! Oh. Exit. What cries that, Leporello? Ah! Uh. What an infernal shriek! What is it, Leporello? Ah, sir, do not go out. There is a man of stone. The white man. Ah, master, I freeze, I faint. Could you hear how he goes? Knock, knock. I understand nothing of all this. There again. Ta, 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 ta. Someone knocks. Open the door. I tremble. Open the door, I tell you. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Fool, to put an end to this, I must go to the door myself. I do not wish to see my friend again. I will quietly hide myself. Creeps under the table. Scene six. Statue of the Commander. Don Juan, thou didst invite me to supper with thee. Behold me here. I would not have believed it, but I will do my best. Leporello, order another supper, and without delay. Ah, master, we are lost. Hold! They who have tasted celestial food cannot descend to share a mortal banquet. We have more serious cares. Speak, then. What would you? As I speak, be attentive. My time is short. Speak, speak. I am all ears. Thou didst invite me. Thou knowest thy duty. Answer me. Wilt thou come and sup with me? O oh Lord, we are engaged. Excuse us. The stain of cowardice shall not spot my fame. Decide, then. I have decided. Wilt thou come? Say no, say no. My heart is firm as ever. I know no fear. I will. Give me thy hand in pledge. Take it. Ah, what sudden chill is this? Repent. Amend thy life, or this is its last hour. No, I scorn repentance. Away and leave me. Lost man, once more repent. Never, infatuated dotard. The time is past. It is now too late. Exit. Oh! What is this sudden fear that weighs upon my spirits? Such is the end of the man who doeth evil, and the death of the perfidious. Don Juan is assailed by demons, who drag him down with them to the infernal regions. Leporello runs off. End of the drama. An end of the libretto to the opera Don Juan by Lorenzo de Ponte.